Hello and welcome to another tech tip by VM Nerd. Our tech topic for today is how to configure a squid proxy server from the PFSense package repository. The goal is to configure squid for web and SSL traffic for all clients on the LAN. We will walk through the following. Build a network layout diagram. Test proxy detection on a client before proxy installation. Configure a basic CA for squid to utilize. Download and install the Squid PFSense package. Configure Squid's storage location. Configure Squid as a transparent proxy. Test proxy detection on a client after proxy installation. Tighten security by enabling a firewall rule that allows only land to land traffic and disable everything else. Block a couple of sites like MSN.com and Yahoo.com so you guys can see the error message from the blocked traffic. And as a note, I want to mention that we will not be configuring the HVAP antivirus as PFSense still considers this unstable. And with that, let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and do what we do best. Let's do a network diagram so that way you guys can see what the configuration looks like before we get into actually building this proxy configuration. Okay, so we do have an internet connection so we will create one called INTRN internet okay and from the internet connection we have a gateway for our mini network here to communicate with so we will create a label there called gateway and it is linked together okay and then from here, we have two different things. We have proxy, which is actually a PFSense. Okay. And we also have our management machine. Okay. And this machine is labeled manager, which is the Visio diagrams that we are currently working on. Okay. So we'll call him manager. And we also have a client who lives behind our proxy server, okay? And he is labeled client one, okay? Let me go ahead and do some connections here. So he connects to the gateway. The manager also connects to the gateway. And he has the capability of going directly to the proxy server. And we have a client who will leverage the proxy. Okay, so let me go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see what we are working with here. So we have our internet connection. We have a gateway, which connects us to the internet. We have the management box, which is where we're doing our Visio, and where we'll be configuring the PFSense proxy server. And then, of course, we have a client that lives behind the proxy server that we'll be doing demonstrations on. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and log into our proxy server. Okay. So... Our proxy server is actually named proxy and does resolve as proxy. Okay. So we'll go ahead and accept all these wonderful error messages. Admin. And the password is pfsense ultra 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 secure. Anyways, no, you should I always recommend you should change those when you get your opportunity, but for what we're doing, this is perfectly fine. Um, I will be copying and pasting this name I will be using it more than once so I plan to keep from having to type that in kind of painful okay so let's go ahead and create our basic CA for squid to utilize okay so we will create one an internal one of course and we will call this one proxy dash CA nothing fancy just keep it simple from California Los Angeles uh, organization is VM Nerd. And to save myself the typing, site one by VM Nerd, and we will use proxy dash CA. You know, all these items here are configurable. Um, feel free to do it however you see fit, but these are the settings that I plan to put in, at least for this video. Okay, go ahead and click save, and now we have our basic certificate authority that proxy or the squid uh, component will leverage okay so the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and 
test. Before we install proxy, let's just go ahead and test our client. So this is our client workstation. As you can see, the background kind of tells us that. And let's go test to make sure that we don't have any proxy. Okay, no proxy configurations pre-enabled. So we'll do test proxy uh, server. Okay. And I found this proxy uh, log test Logano. I actually thought it was useful and it pretty much spilled it out. So right here it says this request does not appears to not come from via a proxy. And the way you do that is you're just going to be looking for how the uh, headers come through, at least what the, um, the web server sees um, as it's going through uh, the site. Okay, As it's going through, it checks. And it's actually looking for these types of things. And that just kind of, kind of gives it a clue as, as to um, whether it's behind a proxy or not. Okay, So let's go back to our management machine. And let's go to Package Manager. And we will go to the available packages. Then let's go ahead and just type in, I guess you can type proxy too, it should work. And we are looking for Squid. Okay. Now there are some other options out there, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to stick with Squid by itself. Okay. This is really all we need for our transparent proxy. Okay, let's see now. So we, we configured our CA. So the next thing we're going to do is go to Squid Proxy Server. And we will actually start by configuring the local cache. Now we don't want to enable this yet because we'll end up getting an error message and we can save ourselves the grief of dealing with that. So go ahead and click uh, local cache. And let's make some just minor tweaks here. Um, this system has about 20 gig of space, so for the hard disk cache size, we'll do about 2 gigs. Not a big deal. And the other setting I like to set here is the memory cache, and this really just allows um, objects to stay in memory. So um, this machine here has about 4 gigs, so we will use 2, half of that, uh, just so that way it's available for things that are in and out. Just to, it makes things a little bit faster. Okay. That's all we really have to set here. Go ahead and click save. And PFSense will do its thing when it's ready. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to general and go ahead and tick the checkbox that says uh, enable squid. But now we need to actually go down and do some configuration. So here we go here. We'll go ahead and configure 3128. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and enable this as a transparent proxy. So that way we don't need to set up a, a, a WPAD server or anything like that. Um, that could be a, another video later on how to do something like that. It's kind of cool. We want to go ahead and enable SSL filtering. And there's a couple options in here, but I prefer the splice all. And basically what this is saying is that um, you're going to allow the SSL to come through. You're not going to really filter it what it's going to do is actually intercept the um the common names that are actually inside the certificate and determine whether that's a legitimate site or not based on the parameters okay and this will prevent ssl errors from coming up from people that actually don't have your ca installed which most people might not okay so we'll go ahead and select lan uh, we will have to set the ca to the one we created um, I actually like to bump this up a little bit. It helps um, as the proxy uh, goes through and accepts requests. It just allows it to be able to process many different requests at a time. Um, I don't mess with these just yet, but technically you can. You can accept the uh, uh, certs with errors. You can check them. You can adapt. Um, most of this really is for um, when you're doing your man-in-the-middle SSL which in this case here, because we're actually splicing, we're not really doing much with that. So, okay, now we will need some logs. Um, rotate the logs however you see fit, but for this demo, we'll just do seven days. And we need a visible host name. This goes back to when I decided to do a copy and paste. And here I'll do support at 
real quick and get rid of the proxy. You can really put whatever you want. Um, but technically, it's kind of nice to have something friendly. And the other thing I like to do here is I like to suppress the squid version because if people are getting errors, you don't might not necessarily want them to know what version you're using. So go ahead and click save. Yeah, we'll give it a moment to do its thing. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're Now that we have this thing com configured, at least in a transparent state, we're going to go to the client. And let's just go ahead and hit some sites. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll actually test to make sure that we're going through. So, okay. So let's start. Let's go to google.com. I actually like, we'll just go straight there this way. Okay, so if you look right here, technically we are going through it, but I want you guys to see this. Uh, where is it? I think we have to go here into developers. What is it? More developer. Yeah, unfortunately they changed this on me. Some of the stuff I like to see here. Security. Yeah, I really, I, I personally like to see these. Uh, security sections that show allow you to view the certificate and this just shows that this is a legitimate google.com um, SSL cert okay um, and you know let's go ahead and pick another site so we'll go to msn.com right now we haven't put any blocks or anything so technically it should go through and when we go back to these sites they should get a little quicker so let's try yahoo.com these are fun sites so Give it a moment while it's doing its thing. Okay, so let's go to msn.com. It should be a little faster this time. Yeah, a little quicker. Now, you know, this is a virtual environment, so I'm not expecting too much out of it. Not from a performance perspective, that is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's go back to our website here and what we're going to do I'm just going to go ahead and close this out so you know when we did this test earlier it said that we did not go through a proxy but I'm going to paste that URL here because I really don't want to type it out okay and we will do that and we should actually get see it appears to have come through a proxy so technically we are going through the proxy here's the proxy name that we defined and it is squid Okay, so here's all the information. This is what, what I was talking about earlier about the X forwarded and these little things down here. It basically gives it away for these sites to determine whether you're going through a proxy or not. Okay, so now that we know that we're behind a proxy, we know things are going well. And now let's go ahead and uh, tighten up security because right now we have a, any any rule that allows us directly to the internet. Well, land to any, but it's good enough to get my point across. So let's go ahead inside. Let's go back to the manager. We'll go to the firewall. We'll check the rules. And as of now, we have a LAN rule. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this off. I really don't need that one anyways. IPv6. Okay, we'll apply that. And then here's the rule I was talking about. So by default, we have LAN to any, any destination. What we're going to do just to tighten things up a little bit is we're actually only going to allow LAN net to LAN net communication. Okay. And basically what this is going to do, it's just going to prevent um, these clients from reaching the internet without going through the proxy, especially a transparent proxy that we have configured. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back. And in theory, normally the rule, if we didn't have a transparent proxy, we wouldn't even be able to get to the internet. It's just how it works. I mean, you know, the rule technically, no, not going to happen. But because of the fact that we are communicating through a proxy, we can. We can still continue to get to the internet. And it is actually a better thing from a security perspective for the devices on your network. It keeps them from, I guess, exposing things. Yeah, it's just safer, you know, overall. You know, you can uh, actually block sites and do stuff like that. Um, although it's out of scope for this video, there are additional options that you can potentially enable um, other packages and whatnot that can actually allow you to get more granular as far as what you can and can't do with Squid. Okay, so let's go back to the manager. And now that we did that, let's go back 
to our squid proxy server and let's go ahead and set that's an acl here yep this is where we want to be so what we're going to do here is we are going to blacklist uh two sites and one being msn.com because that is going to be our http and here's our https and the reason why i wanted to show you an http and an https is i want you to see the error messages that happen okay so we'll go ahead and save okay let's go back to the client and let's obviously google will come up so which is good that means we're still connecting through the proxies we see fit and let's go ahead and go to msn.com and if you see right here, we got an error message. Because of the fact that we told Squid not to allow uh, this particular URL, it will not go through, okay? And let's do the same thing with Yahoo. Okay. Should, okay, there we go. Yeah, proceed to Yahoo unsafe, okay? And basically it's the same thing. It's just saying you're not allowed. Now, earlier I showed you what the SSL chain kind of look like for a site that was working so let's go back and let's take a look at what this yahoo one is so right here we got a broken ssl and really the reason why is because of the fact that we define a proxy ca in squid's configuration it performed a man in the middle type event well i know i mentioned early on about the man in the middle component but when it comes to ACLs or your blacklisting of websites, it's going to generate an SSL cert as the proxy server itself does not have the ability to go in and inspect the packets as those packets are encrypted. So since it since there is an ACL, the only thing it could do is use the local CA that we've defined and it created a SSL on behalf of the website since you don't have access and if you notice there in the URL bar it's actually using the IP address as opposed to the common name or host name and that had to do with the fact that the URL that we specified was not really allowed through the proxy server and this will conclude our video on how to configure a squid proxy server from the pfSense package repository we built a network layout diagram we tested the proxy detection on the client before the proxy installation. We configured a basic CA for Squid to utilize. We downloaded and installed the Squid PFSense package. We configured Squid's storage location. We configured Squid as a transparent proxy. We've tested the proxy detection after proxy configuration. We tightened up the security by enabling a firewall rule that allows only land-to-land -land traffic. We blocked a couple of sites, and I was able to show you some of the error messages. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for more tech tips. You can also visit our website at www.vmnerd.com or our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash VM nerd.